there, and welcome back to another episode of Code Hour. This is episode 21, I believe, and I wanted to show the follow-up to the previous episode. The previous episode, I showed how to publish to a private NuGet feed in Azure DevOps. And in this episode, I wanted to show how to do versioning and also how to automatically push to the private NuGet feed from a automated pipeline, from an Azure DevOps pipeline. So let's let's do this thing. The, the last thing I, I showed was an error in Visual Studio Code that said, hey, this thing already exists in 1.0.0, and so we need a we need a new version. To fix that, we need to specify the version inside of the the cake build command. So right now there's this 1.0.0, and so we can fix that by specifying in the pack command and the version number. And to do that, it's an ms build settings equals new dot net core build settings dot set version and I want this to be 1.0.1 for now I guess there we go and that's probably going to solve the problem we can try we can try running it and double checking that that works and for now, we're just we're just hard coding the setting, but uh, let's get let's get something much better than hard coded for now. So when we run this, hopefully we would ex I would expect to see oh it did a clean good yep we got a new release folder it's building it and then there it is excellent okay we've got a 1.0.1. nuget package there and. There's there's a subtle problem here. If I were to just publish this right now, it would it would work. But if I take a look inside of this file, and I, I don't know if you can know you could do this, but you can you can rename a new PKG file to .zip, and because it's actually a zip under the covers, and you can look inside of it, and we can see that there is a lib folder, and here's the DLL. If I were to extract that one file. And take a look at its settings. There we go. Inside of the details folder, it's still saying 1.0.0, which is not good. We need to make sure that the file itself contains the correct version. So let's put, for now, let's put a variable up at the top of our version, and we can do something slightly better. And that is that when we do the build, we can specify the same thing that we did when we did the pack, which was we can specify the version number. Now you could specify inside of the csproj file, and that would be fine, but by specifying it here, we have a lot more control, and that makes me happy. And I guess in order to verify that it actually worked, we should fix the underlying problem, which was that inside of the library, inside of the password validator, we were saying it's less than six, but we actually meant to say greater than or equal to six. It is valid. It's a valid password if it's greater than or equal to six. So if I now run a push, I'm specifying the correct version number, oh, except for in there. Oh yeah, file does not exist. Okay. Let's try this again. And uh, one of the things I love about using Cake is it's just you can comment out these is dependent onlines as needed. Wonderful thing about dependency management. There we go. Oh, did you notice that? Okay, over in the push, it says, hey, we are pushing 1.1.0.newpkg, pushing it up to the, the server. And if we go and take a look inside of here, Oh, there we go. There it is. There, that's it. That's what we're looking for. That is the 1.0.1 version of the widget co auth lib. And so hopefully this consumer over here inside of the inside of reporting, if we go into dependencies, they can manage their libraries and say, oh, look at that. There's an update available just for us. And if we update that 
package file and hopefully when we run the reporting site here if I just type in a really short password like ABC it should fail perfect okay hey all right so that worked we got a 1.0.1 and that's that's a good that's a good starting point we're still hard coding the version and that's not good so to fix that it would be much better if we could calculate what the version should be and one way to fix that is to is, is to use a, a command called git version and git version if you're using git flow will extract the version number from either the tags that you have in git or it'll automatically figure it out from the branch that you're in so if you have a branch called release 1.0.2 I guess we're up to 2 now it will figure that out from the branch name it's a wonderful tool and if you are interested in including it then it's a pound tool command it looks like that uh, oh yeah here it is inside of inside of my blog post there we go that is going to include git version and now just by the virtue of including that tool we can have a new task called a uh, new task called version and then we can say var well I've already set it so oh there it is sem sem semantic version we want to pull we want to pull out the semantic version from inside of the information from git so semver and if I just document that if I were just to run that one task I believe it'll it'll pull out maybe just 1.0.0 it's complaining at me right now that I didn't specify that I didn't pin the version number it's a nice warning that I should really specify exactly which version of git version that I want okay and I think what maybe the error is is it, it's unable to extract a version number because we never actually tagged it so I'm gonna go into the team explorer and I'm gonna go into the tags folder and I would like to specify that the tag that I'm interested in is I'm going to create a new tag called v1.0.2 because 1.0.1 was the last one so 1.0.2 should be the, the current one and I guess before even tagging it I probably ought to commit so let's just There we go. Okay, with a good git ignore, and we're not trying to commit too much information, then that, that worked. And now we can specify a tag of v1.0.2. Hey, okay, there we go. Version 1.0.2. Excellent. That is exactly what I was hoping to see. Now, we do need this version, and we need to set this variable prior to running the build task. So, dot is dependent on version. And now, if I run the push command uh, let's make sure that I've made another change here so let's say password turns out is a bad password so I'm going to save that and hopefully I can push my latest changes of 1.0.2 up to the server Hey, that looks good. I don't know if you saw that back there, but it says it was pushing 1.0.2 up to the server. And if I jump over to the server now, 1.0.2 is there. That's great. And presumably I can... Yep, an update is available. I can update it. And if I run it again, then if I type in the word password, it should fail, right? All right, but password one works fine. Yeah, good enough. 
And now, the last thing that we want to be able to do is to have this happen automatically. So instead of running it from the command line locally, now we want to be able to do this from the server. So let's make one more change and say if if password is equal to, well, password one is also a bad thing, then let's try and do this on the server. So to do that, we want to go over to build pipelines and builds and create a new build pipeline. This is going to run this automatically. And to do this right, we really need a YAML file. We could do this with the traditional way with the draggy droppy stuff, but YAML files are awfully nice. And they allow you to have what you're doing be specified programmatically. And, and programmatically is, is great. Oh, where's your code? It's in Azure repos git. Oh, I guess I never actually pushed the code up, did I? So to do that, Team Explorer, and I think this will be synchronize. Okay, that's good. And now if I refresh, yes, there it goes. There we go. We specified the right thing, and we would like a. Oh, this is this is a, a fairly reasonable Azure pipeline. We want to run an Ubuntu latest. No. Like, let's say PowerShell. Okay. We want to run build.ps1, which will run cake. We want to specify the target. What did we What did we have here? Push. Yep. We want to run the push command. The NuGet username. Oh, oh yes. We never parameterized that. That's a big deal. We really do need to parameterize that username. And so this username should be extracted into a parameter. Looks good. And so then down here, you get username, and here the password is NuGet password. Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. And I think I'm going to commit what I've got because I do need to make sure that that NuGet username and that NuGet password are synced up to the server. So I'm going to. And while we're at it, let's put in a tag of v1.0.3. Create the tag. And now we're going to synchronize all that up. Let's push all of those changes. And now when we've parameterized the username and password, those will go back into the cake script, the cake script as we would expect. All right, should we save and run? Okay, it is now complaining that the path wasn't found. No such thing as lib authenticator, which I think is a carryover from the previous run that I did. So I don't think I want this working directory. Let's try getting rid of that. Oh, oh, and while we're at it, you know what? Those ver those variables aren't going to work correctly unless we set them. So let's go to variables. And the name of the variable, as we specified, uh, was new get username. And that was delete me. And I love the fact that you can, you can check the encrypt this. We don't want to encrypt the I don't want to encrypt the username, but the, the password should definitely be encrypted. So that's NuGet password. And there we go. There's that password. And let's keep that encrypted so no one can see it. Save and queue. OK. We've got an error. 
All right, the problem is it's trying to push 1.0.1, .1, and I bet that what happened is that the tag probably didn't get pushed. There we go. Okay, push the tag. I'm going to try building that one more time. Hey, look at that, the version. The version is correct, 1.0.4. That's a really good sign. So that means that we ought to be able to go back over to the artifacts once this is finished and we would expect to see a, I would expect to see a 1.0.4 over there. This is gonna work, got a good feeling. Hey, it says it was successful. That's fabulous. Artifacts, 1.0.4. And if all this works, then when going over to the reporting site, we ought to be able to go to the Manage NuGet Packages, and hey, there's an upgrade, 1.0.2 to 1.0.4, I specified it. Update, and if I run this now, hopefully, if I type in password 1, it will fail. Excellent. And there we go. Excellent. So what we've done here is publish our private NuGet feed, our library, to the private NuGet feed entirely on the server. So what you can do with this is anytime you have changes, you just merge it to the master branch and the push out your master branch and it automatically publishes to the, to the NuGet feed and then anyone who wants to get the latest updates can pull it down with NuGet and it uses semantic versioning and everything is wonderful. So I hope that you learned something. I hope this was valuable. And if this was useful to you, please like and subscribe.